What's up, guys? So we got uh, we got two dudes here. Two, well, three dudes total. Three dudes, one podcast. Okay, you're here. We got Adam. Adam back. Okay. Chime in. Chime in. So the radio can hear. Uh, hi. Stop acting like you don't know. <laughs> Hey everyone, glad to be back. It's, it's glad to be the, here on the, uh, the Bring Your Dive podcast. The people have been demanding. They've been demanding. They go, hey, why not get three dudes together? So, you know, we took, we asked Adam very kindly, we, you know, to take time out of his very busy schedule to I'm a very roll, busy guy. roll in here and join us in our podcast. <laughs> so, here we are. Yeah. First, let's, uh, let's thank, wh- where my, the feedback, I put the name in there, it's gone now. Is it because we have a conflict? Oh, I don't know. It's Joshua Martinez. That's all right. Joshua Martinez gave us a five-star review on iTunes, and we appreciate that very much. We will be sending you gifts. We're actually we're, we're prepared. Yeah. We're going to be setting those gifts up today and sending them sometime soon. We got the gifts together, and we're going to send them out. We're going to be sending them out soon, so look out for that. Uh, you know, why does uh, why does Joshua get a gift? Because he left us a five-star review. Oh, okay. So and, and, and anybody who gives us a five-star review and sends us proof that they are sitting that is indeed them writing that mm-hmm. review, they will get a gift from us. Any yeah. gifts for four-star? No gift. Well, I say no gifts for four stars. I say no gifts. No, no, you don't get a gift for that. That's no. fair enough. If you don't like our show, a five star, then you don't get leave, a gift. Leave, look, leave, leave a five star and comment critically. You know, I will still, still read it and understand what you're saying. Absolutely. If anything, I'll pay more attention if it's a five star. If it's a four star or a three star, I'm just gonna ignore it and hate you for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. So there you go. So anyway, thank you to Joshua, and uh, we love that shit. So keep it coming. So let's just let's just go in hot. I brought Malone in here. Uh, because I want to talk about serious issues. I want to talk about serious topics. Mm-hmm. I'm a serious guy. He's a serious dude. So I want to talk about raising minimum wage. Minimum wage, anything about minimum wage, not necessarily raising it, but you know, the discussion is, should we raise it? Does it need to be raised? And uh, yeah, I want to talk about that because I think that we have definitely have different opinions. I'm not actually sure what my opinion is on it yet. I have a lot of thoughts that I want to kind of just talk through it with some, you know, some guys that I, that I trust, you know? Okay. What are your thoughts? Why don't you start? I'll start. So here's what I was just thinking. This is a, a this is unrelated to you know much of the discussion. But I was imagining, let's say minimum wage is fifteen dollars an hour. I never did the math. What is that? So we do the math. You, well, uh, it's a thirty k a year. A thirty k multiply by two and add add a thousand. Okay, so so fifty dollars an hour is about thirty k a year. I got my first job at McDonald's when I was thirteen years old. Currently, eight dollars an hour Minnesota's minimum wage ends up at a gross monthly income of thirteen eighty six. So you about double that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. So uh, I got my first job when I was 13. Now I know there's an inflation thing and back then it wasn't the same, but let's just, let's just let roll with it. Yeah. So I'm working as a 13 year old getting paid $15 an hour working, I don't know, 15 hours a week. Then I decided in middle school that I'm just going to drop out. I'm like, well, I don't want, I'm just going to work at McDonald's full time. And then I'm making 30 K a year living in my parents' basement, <clears throat> no bills, no debt, just grinding it out at McDonald's until I'm 18. In which case I have, you know, four solid years of income that, you know, I've spent some on video games and shit, but a 13 year old can't spend that much money, you know? Now I can just come out, pretty much buy a car cash and put a pretty solid down payment on a house and then keep working at McDonald's 30K a year and just pay my house payment and live pretty comfortably for the rest of my life. That's pretty great. Yeah. That seems like a pretty awesome, you know, thing for me. If the minimum wage was a reasonable price for yourself. Well, he did. Yeah, he's, I did. He's, yeah, he's, he's assuming an hour. it's 15 an hour. Yeah. So is your point that, are you trying to say that that's bad because it makes people want to just be, be fine working McDonald's? No, I, I, well, I mean, it would definitely create a lot more demand for McDonald's jobs. But, and yeah, a lot of, like right now, the current American system is you pretty much have to go to college. And part of the, the biggest issue right now in modern times is that student loan debt. It's the new housing crisis, more or less. It's, it, the bubble's gonna burst because tons of people are paying back, you know, trying to pay back student loans. They've taken way too much. Anybody can go to college. Anybody, everybody goes to college and people can't pay back those loans. So that would, to some extent, solve that because people who before were going to college that probably they shouldn't. Should have been, yeah. Yeah, now they're, they have another, a realistic alternative. Yeah, you know? yep. Yeah, I mean, it's, you get a much higher dropout rate, definitely. You get much higher demand for those low-skilled jobs, which, you know, would be, I don't know what would happen then. You know, they would be more competitive? I guess, I mean, I feel like it would kind of, in some ways, even out. I mean, if places have to pay their lowest paid workers more, they're probably going to find some kind of a way to make more money elsewhere or hire or employ fewer people or have fewer people working or something like that. I mean, it's going to even out like they're not just going to all of a sudden start making more money to make up for this. And a a big part, they're going to have to somehow raise prices. 
I mean, I think so. Well, like, they have to do that, and they have to maybe cut down on how many people they have working total. A big, a big I part of guess. the problem too is that you know we talk about sure McDonald's can probably do that, but the mom pa shops. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly it. Yeah. I watched a lot of, you know, I try to see what the case is for raising minimum wage, and obviously it's phenomenal for people who get paid. Yeah. I'd love to get paid three times more, absolutely, but it doesn't really address how where you get the money. And they're like, well, if everybody at McDonald's pays 15, 15 cents more than, you know, whatever, or if Walmart, which only lose a billion dollars in revenue a year, it's like, well, those companies can do that. I've been, I've been pro raising minimum wage. Yeah. Okay. But then I, I started really thinking about it when you brought this up and started thinking about all these problems that are coming up, mm -hmm. the ones we're bringing up now. Yeah. And I realized that raising minimum wage to some extent is a good solution to, to a certain level, a certain cap, it probably needs to be done, but you can't raise it beyond to a certain point because this is the things we're talking about now are going to happen. So I, I've thought of some alternate solutions that I think are more feasible. Because part of the reason we talk about, you know, why do we need to raise the minimum wage? Well, it's because people can't live on what's currently being sold as minimum wage, right? Now, instead of raising the minimum wage, we should look at other ways to help people get their money be more bang for their buck. So there's two ways I thought about this. One, currently, if you're making minimum wage, like I said, it's 1386 a month. Now, after taxes for a minimum wage job, that ends up being, you know, what, eight, nine hundred? Like that's nothing. I mean, you can't live off that. Most people rent are five, six hundred minimum if you're living in a pretty shitty place. So the first thing I was thinking is, if you're in a minimum wage job, I think to some extent you should be used out for most taxes, right? If you're purely purely minimum wage. Now you're saying, oh, what about all those taxes? Where's all that coming from? Fuck. If you raise one CEO, you know, any CEO, if you say, let's say you make over two hundred thousand dollars a year, you have to you're taxed one percent more than you've been taxed before. You'll make up those minimum wage jobs, probably. Some, you know, I don't know the numbers, obviously, but maybe, maybe that. that's a bit, a bit extreme. But like, th you can make up that minimum wage taxation, the the two hundred dollars a month that you're probably getting extra there, somewhere else. So that's one possibility. Maybe not completely eliminate their taxes, <clears throat> but reduce it to a point where that thirteen eighty six will actually they'll actually take that home. You know. Now the other thing right now is I think the biggest issue is that when you're when you get your paycheck, most of it's probably going to your rent. Because renting prices, in my mind, are crazy inflated, especially if you're living anywhere in a, in a city center. Like rent in in cities is jacked up crazy high compared to rent anywhere else. So anybody living in a city automatically pretty much cannot afford a, a place that's livable on a minimum wage income. Yep. And you'll you'll do it, but it's hard. It's hard as hell. Probably right. So I think there needs to be more regulation for housing prices because mm -hmm. that's the, one of the biggest issues right now. If there was more regulation for housing and more in rent and, and pricing, then you can actually survive off, I think, what you're getting. So I think it, it could be a balance of all three of those. That's my my opinion. Though. I think it was some really to rate, to numbers. increase quality of life for people who are who are poor. Yeah, without so. without forcing these businesses who can't afford to raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars. You know. Yeah, I'm for a higher minimum wage, but I think you should. It shouldn't be for everyone. It should be only if you work like thirty or more hours per week. If that's your full time job, essentially. As in, if you're someone, if you're in high school working 10 hours a week, then no, I don't think you're not, you shouldn't, you're not living off that money. You shouldn't get that same money. It should, I think you should have to be, if that is your full-time job, then indeed, yeah, you should, it should be enough for you to actually make your living. If it's your part-time job, then I don't think that it should That's be. That's so easy to game though. Yeah, I mean, Because then McDonald's the, just not hire anybody, not employ anybody. Not hire anybody. Work, and not the hire alternative anybody too is it, it, it. Or not hire anybody. Yeah, they would just have more part-time workers and pay them nothing. And incentivize yeah. people to drop out of high school. Which yeah. is, I think, even any more. I guess, and then you'd want to work full time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not worried about people dropping out of high school, though, because I think the American system right now of forcing people to go to college when they don't need to is, is stupid. I agree that, that there's. <clears throat> nowadays, we talked about this before in the previous one, but I, I always say that college used to be the, the end goal, and then anything above that is, is amazing. <clears throat> yeah. But nowadays, college is high school. If you don't go to college, you're looked at as a failure in a lot of uh, places. But I think it's a waste. Not a lot, not everybody needs to go to college. Like especially if you're good at a trade or a craft. Yeah, you know some of the problem. One of the problems with that is I'm not. I don't have the perspective to know. Like I know if I didn't go to college, my parents would think less of me. Yeah. But I'm not sure if that would like other people would. You know, like I could still get a job doing you know what I do now without going to college. Are you sure? I am sure because one of the well, I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure because I don't know that I'm perspective. But yeah, there are people who are you know self-taught in web development in design and they can just get a job They're like oh did you go to college you're a good designer web developer that's, a, that's an interesting field but people, in, a, in a competitive market <clears throat> people care i don't think it's as easy as you think in a competitive uh, market, I don't care well here okay i mean you say easy or not easy if, if instead of going to college for five years i 
worked at full time at McDonald's and then applied to jobs for five years and got an internship somewhere. I think like, yeah, it wouldn't be easy, but would it be easier than having a ton of debt and going to college and getting a job? And so the, the statistics show that when you go to college, you're generally getting jobs that pay higher. And so the whole, the plan kind of is that eventually your higher wage will pay back what you've spent on college and you'll actually earn more money in the long run. Of course. That's but, what I say about law school too, right? We, yeah, they <laughs> fucking love saying that in law school. Um, but like, it, it's like the game of life, you know, where you, you got to pay money right away, but hopefully you'll, you'll make more money because your career options are higher. You got to spend money and make yeah, money. Yeah, but see, the, but I, like, I don't have the perspective. I've never, I've never not been in college. So yeah. I don't know what it's like to be well, that kind well, of person. Well, think about yourself as an employer. You, you know, a hundred people apply to a job. Mm -hmm. 90 of them have college degrees, 10 don't. Yeah. You're filtering through the resumes. It depends on the, you know, it depends on the job. That's the thing, but it really depends. Like well, if, if I'm hiring a web developer, I couldn't care less how big of a degree he has. Show me what you've done. So you've got, you got, you know, 10 people or like, let's say 10, eight of them graduated from, you know, good universities in the area. Mm -hmm. Two of them just graduated from high school. And what's on their resume, let's say, especially if they're, you know, pretty young. I mean, aren't you gonna probably hire somebody who's got a little more experience, a little, at least has, has an education in that field? If, I will, I, if I'm trying to hire the best at what someone does, yeah. and I can see that through a way that isn't, what's the piece of paper say? I will always do that as an employer. So what's that way? I, well, it depends. I mean, in the case of a lawyer, I'm not sure what you do. Obviously, that was not going to work. In the case of a web developer or a designer or a programmer, they can certainly show, here's what I've done. And I'm like, well, that's better than this college graduate's done. Well, it is a, that is a problem. I think lawyers, lawyers especially run into lately, but a lot of careers that when you're an employer, you're looking at thousands of resumes. Everybody's applying to you. And you need shortcuts, and sometimes the shortcut is the most prestigious university. Sometimes it is the highest level of education. Yeah, that'll still that'll still happen. That'll still exist. And I mean, thousands of I don't know, like what you know, it depends on what job you are. Like yeah, yeah. you know, where we work, we don't get thousands of applications. Yeah. We get you know, ten, and you can easily look at those ten and bring those ten people in and go, okay, show me your work, and then you can see the examples of the work and, and then judge them based on that. And also, you can pay less to people who don't have college degrees. So we're we're getting away a little bit from the we original discussion, but the but no, I mean not not totally. But the thing is. There's two issues here. One is living off minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And then two is we're kind of anti-school for everybody. And we're thinking minimum wage is going to make it easier for people to not go to school and they don't have to. Yeah. Right? So it is, is it a combination of two options? Is making school less attractive and, you know, making hiring standards <clears throat> better? Like, like what, what is the ultimate goal here? Is it make people live who can? Yeah, I think the goal is to... So if you work full time, you yeah. can live off that money and you're not. I mean, one thing we talked about was age too. We talked about having age be a determiner of. Uh, yeah, that would just help in discrimination though. You just not hire people that are. Well, yeah, you're right. You're right. That, that probably is. One of the questions I want to ask is, yeah. does every job have to be a livable wage? Yes. You think every job should be? Yes. It must be. I think so. Yeah, I just, I, I don't, I don't work that way. Then how can, I mean, how could you have one? That isn't. I mean, who is supposed to work for one that isn't? A people who are part-time workers, people who have a job and want another job, or people who are doing school, or people who have a hobby that pays well, some money and they just want a part-time well, job. The idea is, if you're if you're getting a full-time job and you're you're doing the job, you only have so many hours in a week, mm -hmm. or uh, you know, right? Yeah. And if this job is full-time, you're doing everything you can to, to be working the hardest you can, then you should be able to live off that. And if you're doing everything you can, you still can't live off that. Then you that leaves you no alternative. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a grim, it's a grim outlook. You're, you're the worst yeah. possible picture, definitely. And there are people who, you know, have no skills or in a terrible position. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't know how to fix that. But I think that not all jobs need to be livable jobs. There could be jobs that are livable jobs, and there are jobs that are just the absolute bottom of the barrel, not livable at all. You just get them because you, you know, you have a few extra hours and you want to pick up a job. When I worked, when I was a high school kid, exactly the example, I didn't give a shit where I worked. But there are people who are going to work. You're, you're all you're talking about is part time, though. Like, yes, yeah. part. Part time, sometimes you're not gonna be able to live off it. But if you're working a full time job, I mean that kind of goes back to what Malone was saying, right? Is, is if you're you're looking at okay, well it's part time, maybe be paid less because you don't need to live off it. But if you're working full time, you've got to be able to live off this wage. Otherwise, I mean, are you saying that only people? Who well, well, we're talking about hourly rate. Like the, yeah. the whole the distinction of full time and part time is relevant to me. It's how much you get paid an hour. Yeah. At at full time, you're not getting paid enough to live because that job isn't a livable job. Yeah. And I think there's room in, in America for jobs that are not livable jobs. I don't think it's the responsibility of McDonald's to make sure that all of its employees can live on their wage. Hmm. I, I just don't see that as a responsibility. Think, I think there really aren't enough jobs out there for people. And so if you're going to take away jobs just through not making them livable for people who are out there looking for jobs for whatever reason to support their lives or families. Are you whispering? 
I, I, I don't think so. You kind of started starting to like really like tone it down a little bit just now. Can I get really serious? Well, you just got quieter. Like, well, we're always okay. So I, I think if you take away these jobs from people, you're going to find that there's not enough jobs for everybody. In, in, well, so, I mean, I'm talking the status quo is what I'm saying now. I'm not taking the status quo right now. There's not enough jobs. For right, and that's where we're at now. Yeah. And I mean, there's people in horrible situations. Oh, God, I'm <laughs> But I just, I mean, that's a, that's a discussion that we can have is, is, I mean, we don't need to have it, but the, the question is kind of assumed that, well, everybody who has a job needs to be able to live off of it. But I'm just not sure if that is, you know, that needs to be that way. Hmm. Why can't I as an employer go, well, look, I, am, I, I have, this is the job I have, but I can't, you can't live off this job. You can come in for five hours a week and help me out, paint the walls, but I can't make you live. That's not an option. Like I have to pay a guy $30 an hour, you know, to make it livable. Well, I guess there's two, two things to run into. There is a lot of people won't work there. I think, but then too, sure. if everybody does that, then there might be enough people who, who do it, but then there'll be a lot of people who are employed because they can't survive off it. Yeah. You've got a bunch of high school kids who probably don't need that job then, yep. working it. But then what about all the people who've got families and kids who actually fucking do need then they need to get a, They need to get a job that's better than paying that's the wall. That's the point. <clears throat> if, all, if there's tons of jobs doing this option that you're talking about, not paying a livable wage, how, how are they gonna find a job that does pay a livable wage? Especially if we're telling them don't go to college because you know, well, you got student loans and then that shit. Yeah, I'm always telling them not to go to college if minimum wage is really high. Fair enough. Well, what about what about my idea about those two options, the tax options and, and the housing? Where the, well, that's not enough money. Well, okay, when you say the word regulation okay, and housing, right, I get turned off completely because I don't want regulation involved. Well, right now, right now, if, I, if you're renting an apartment in the city, your minimum is probably 600 Yeah, but that's because right. there's a lot of demand for apartments in the city. Yes. But now what if, what if we said that, uh, you know, there's a subsidy? Government pays a subsidy, $200. $200. And so now some of those places only are for $400. Well, then the minimum wage doesn't need to go up for three more dollars because now those people can live much easier. You know what I mean? Or at least there's affordable, low-cost housing in those areas. Yeah, I'd, rather, I'd rather force businesses to pay more to their people than I would try to organize a government-controlled scheme of raising and distributing money to people. I think it would overall be better for the economy if they just force businesses to pay more. I mean, because I think they'd do a better job at it we do already over, overall. Have, we do already have that, but you know, government subsidized housing. Right, but if you're saying the, the difference between either raise the minimum wage yeah. or lower or subsidize lower rent, I guess I'd prefer to raise the minimum wage because I think then at least I, businesses I, have a flexibility somewhat there I to wish figure there was, out how to do it. I wish there was, like I, I, I'm imagining a scenario where all three are in play. Where you raise the minimum wage a little bit, you lower housing a little bit, and then maybe if you make below a certain income, we talk about cutting you a higher rate in your taxes. Yeah, you know? I mean that's you know a good that's a good solution down the middle solution, yeah. which I, you know, I guess I can agree with. I or, don't or die. I don't want the government <coughs> getting involved in shit though because they're the worst. <coughs> so what final? I mean, final I, verdict. I have fifteen dollar minimum wage. Yes or no? No. Not a fifteen dollars. I I think ten ten dollars is a good minimum. I'm for fifteen. I'm for I'm for ten. Have, I'm can't for, live, you can't have a family on ten. Here's the thing: that it's, I'm for, it's not possible. I'm for ten. How do small businesses survive with with high with such high high rates? I don't well, know. they can't. They will close. Well, ten dollars, I think, is they could. They couldn't they somehow? I mean, I mean, very somehow. I mean, they need to do like um, you know you worked you both worked at my pizza place, yeah. my parents' home. Yeah. If we tripled the rates there. There's no way that place is profitable. Well, straight okay. up, it's not going to happen. Ten dollars, right? That was ten is a little bit. I mean, that would dollars. make it very yeah. unprofitable. Very well. Part very of the problem is, I mean, part of this is a lot of people going to business who probably shouldn't go to business. Why do your parents buy a pizza place? You know what I mean? Well, that's. I mean, I don't really yeah. see that argument. Is but, but let's. But but here's the other thing. It's not like if you if you're looking at starting a business, you're like, well, I'm going to pay my workers ten dollars an hour. Can I make this work? They'll probably go, no, I'm not going to start. Well, yeah, but then you're, that, that's not. That you're re reinforcing the point that it's, it, it, the barrier to ent ent enter into a business is, is much higher if your wages go up. McDonald's and Domino's Pizza can go, I, okay, yeah. we'll triple wages. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, and, but you can't open a store and go, well, our, our overhead now is way higher. So you no, know. you're right. Mm -hmm. I mean, at some point, everything is cost of everything is going up, right? And the people you're hiring have to be able to to live off it. I think. I mean, you're saying that, that maybe not everyone does. And so, yeah. I mean, minimum know. wage does go up. I don't know what it's based on. It does go up. Uh, is it like it's the government does some inflation? Shit. Yeah, it's a job. When I started, I got five fifteen when I worked at McDonald's back yeah. then, yeah. and uh, now now minimum wage is eight twenty five. It's eight dollars in Minnesota. The federal minimum wage is still seven twenty five. So that oh, okay. So in same let's stick to Minnesota. So yeah. it's like a thirty percent increase. No, it went yeah. from it went from fifty percent increase five fifteen. It went from 
Well, more yeah, than since 50. you were young. So it's, you know, so that, that's been, uh, it's been like 20 years, I guess. Yeah. Since I work at McDonald's. Oh, more yeah. think it's better or worse than inflation. I think Do I think I, it is? Or yeah. you, you should ask. I'm asking, I'm wondering. I think inflation's raised more than the minimum wage has gone up. So it hasn't caught up to inflation? Probably I, not. I would say it has not. I feel like has... Like, how much was milk? I guess I never bought milk. Like, how much were fucking movie tickets is my point, man. I used to go see a movie for... Five twenty five for a uh, show starting course. Now it's fucking $11. Even, I still, I'm still yeah, trying right. to pull a student ID scan. <laughs> I'm still getting fucking $10 to give me a quarter off. This is fucking <laughs> Granny's Candy Shop. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. So I, don't I, have, I, don't, I have no solution for this. Well, <laughs> you know what? If there were easy solutions, I think everyone would have figured it out by now. Yeah, so. you're right about that. But it's an interesting <clears> discussion. If anybody yeah. out there has, you know, well, realistic... Life experience, interesting opinions. Please write. Don't just be like, "This is dumb." I like the I like your point, Alex. Of you said, "Should every job?" It's like a philosophical question. Yeah. Should every job provide a livable wage? And I think that's a good point. I mean, some businesses, like you said, your parents' pizza place, and many more, I'm sure, like they couldn't exist if they Could needed not. to pay yeah. their workers exactly. three times as much. They like, it's they not can't. some exactly. It'll yeah, be. it's not some evil boogeyman. And they just say, "Well, they can raise prices." Just, but well, I, we do have to raise prices. I would, I would say that I would be interested in, the, in a solution where if you're like a certain type of business, maybe a certain income per year or certain, you know, like what, what your business takes in a year. <clears throat> okay. Let's say if you're below a certain threshold, then maybe you don't have to pay the local wage and you could just try getting by on part-time workers. Because then that, that leaves mm -hmm. an alternative for those businesses. Like then survive. why would you ever try to work for one of those then? I mean, if you're just going to make, well, if you're, if I'm, you know, well, Joe Blow looking for a yeah. job, why would I ever work for some tiny place that can only get paid half as much. only job available. Plus, yeah, it's like high school. Like when I would I was, be looking for a way out. When I was possibly, looking, when I was desperate yeah, to stay right. there. I'd never want to stay there. Yeah, but yeah. there's always somebody who's going to fill that crack, I feel like. It's you true. Know, like that, that gap, a high school student coming in or mm -hmm. something. So maybe so, one of our genius listeners knows the answer, and you can uh, write in, ABD or, podcast. Or just cut out the middle and write Obama, because that's all we're going to do. It's write Obama a letter. So. <laughs> all right, well, let's... ABD podcast at gmail.com. Let's change gears a little bit to me bitching a little bit. Is that a gear change? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Hulu. I want to bitch about it some more. Uh, since last, I bitched about it at least two other times, but we're coming back. I have unsubscribed from Hulu. I'm I'm almost as tired of watching Hulu's ads as I am of watching the government fuck on minimum wage. Oh, wow! I thought you were gonna say as you are tired of hearing me talk about. That's it. what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I was going. I was just looking for, um, <laughs> for a second. How, how much was the subscription? That's like okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Nine dollars, right? Uh, I don't even know how much it is. I think it's nine bucks. So I got Amazon Prime instead. Yeah. Uh, now, now here's one of the things I, I promised I would do, and I did do it, is I wrote down all my reasons for hating Hulu. There were six of them. And then I was tweeting these reasons at Hulu. Daily. Daily. Like the same ones all day, every day pretty much? There were six reasons, and I tweeted each reason <laughs> twice. So it was 12 total tweets over the course of a week, much to Adam's dismay, who hated my tweets so much. <laughs> Because I, I am 100% of his Twitter I, feed, apparently. I do, I do hate your Twitter, like 50%. Your Twitter experience. <laughs> Just retweets on the same article. And like, it's literally twitter. two times. They do it twice. Is it that inconvenient for you? It's no. annoying. I've well, been tweeting a lot more, though. <laughs> Go ahead. Keep, keep your So right. anyway, <laughs> over, the course of, over the course of a week, I tweeted at Hulu with a reason of, of why I hate them 12 times. And I would say probably at least at least half of the tweets I made got retweeted by multiple people, got favorited by multiple people, and replied to both me and Hulu with additional reasons why they hate Hulu. Well, you're one hundred percent right in your reasons for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, the reasons are sound, and a lot of people hate them, and I don't want Hulu to change their system, but I do want them to address what I'm saying. Okay. I want them to go, hey, I noticed you're literally just fucking spazzing on a Twitter about us. How can we make your experience better? How can we salvage this situation? Respond? Yeah, they did respond one time only over my, I'm, one of my first tweets. Uh, they responded to me why they have ads. <laughs> and the reason they have ads is to, uh, they sent me a link to their FAQ page, which explained why do we have ads on Hulu. And the explanation was something about how they need to pay for premium content through ad revenue. Yep. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, thank you so much for explaining to me why advertising exists in the world. That's very helpful in addressing <laughs> my concerns about why I pay you a monthly subscription and you still show me ads. I, the crazy thing too is that I don't know how much they make in that ad revenue, but I imagine if every Hulu subscriber, if they just charge 10 instead of 9 or you know, 11, $1 more most now. people probably pay the 11. They honestly probably would. But if there are no ads, they'd be much happier. I can assure you, like, because I make some ad revenue off my website, yeah. that me paying them $5 a month is is astronomically more valuable to them than any amount of ad news they get off of me. Yeah. Like the amount of ads I watch, which is maybe in a week, I don't know, say 50. And that's guaranteed. That, that's a penny. 
Like, this is seriously a joke. The fact that I pay them guaranteed money every month and they're still hitting me for the five fucking cents I bring in on ad revenue, they're, that greed level is amazing to me. Raise the price a dollar and that, that eliminates that right there, I'm thinking. I mean, yeah, they could do, sure, they could raise the price a dollar or, I mean, the, li the needs are already eliminated once they get me to pay them every month. Well, that's the idea, no, right? Like, any, any app you download. Yes. Yeah. The model is absolutely explored. You get people, it's fucking ridiculous. But that's not what I'm mad about. Okay, they want to be greedy, fuck them. I'm more mad now if they didn't address me having a complete fucking rant on Twitter. They didn't address it. When I bitch about Taco Bell one time, like, Taco Bell, you fucked up my beans mm -hmm. on Twitter, they're on it. <laughs> they're on it within an hour <laughs> giving me coupons. You flicked my bean. All right, give me better beans. They give me, they give me coupons, <laughs> they mail me shit. They send, they send me a handwritten note. Yeah. I bitched at Tires Plus when I was pissed about that because they fucked my car. They were on me. They called me. They emailed me. They wanted to they gave me a refund. Huh. They were great. And Xbox Live even, who is you know atrocious as well. They're great at Twitter support. Like if you bitch at them, they want to help. Hulu doesn't give a fuck. I encourage everybody to quit their Hulu subscription. I absolutely do. Get on. Just get on. You know, if you don't have Netflix, switch Netflix. If you don't have that, get to Amazon Prime. But don't pay Hulu anymore. They're pieces of shit. I also find myself only watching. It. Hulu at a certain time of the year, like basically fall. That's when like all the, the shows are on and you want to watch concurrently, you know? But even, even let's say you, you know, cut uh, Hulu. Well, fuck, cable, you know, cable has all the on-demand stuff. I mean, tell me how much more for cable at that point. Like, well, here's the issue with that is, is Comcast is a piece of shit. Yeah. And I do, will not pay them any money. That's not, and, yeah. Now, I don't want to go there, but I found out that those fuckers <laughs> own Hulu. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Fuck me, man. No wonder they're so awful. The plot thickens. Comcast, the pieces of shit that I quit to, mm -hmm. I quit Comcast to move to Hulu and Netflix, only to find out I'm out of the fucking frying pan into the fire. That's very interesting. These motherfuckers. That's very interesting. <laughs> so I'm still paying those fucking pieces of shit money. So I'm really glad I'm out so of the So how are you looking at Amazon so far? It, well, Amazon, fuck them too. You know why? Because they don't support Chromecast. Fuck everybody. The, well, I like Amazon fine. I like it. I look, usually it's my Xbox I wash it on, so yeah. I, my experience is pretty much unchanged. Which what are you using your Chromecast for? I watch in the kitchen and in the bedroom. I mean, like, what do you watch on it? Well, I used to watch everything I watch everywhere, but now I cut Why, why did you buy a Chromecast instead of, like, a Android? He didn't buy it. I gave him mine. Oh, you Well, yours. I bought one and he gave me yours. Yeah. I mean, because, well, okay, so Roku has a stick that's 50. Amazon has a stick that's 50. Uh -huh. And they're usually going on sale for, like, 35, 40 all the time. Yeah. Why don't you just buy one of those instead and you can watch everything? Uh, yeah. For 50 bucks? You can, so wait, you can buy an Amazon stick and then you can watch all the Amazon shit and he subscribes to Amazon and he doesn't get all the shit? That's how well, no, no, well, the, the point is that the, the Chromecast that you plug into your TV to stream it, like if you don't have an Xbox plugged in, yeah. like, you've got to have something to stream it off of. Like yeah. your TV's not going to do it unless it's a smart TV. So Ro the Chromecast doesn't do it. I'm saying these other sticks. Roku streams Amazon? Yes, I watch it through my Roku stick for Oof. 50 bucks. Why doesn't it on Chromecast then? Because then you wouldn't buy the Roku. But Roku's not even Amazon's pro Amazon Fire is Amazon's product. Yeah, but I don't know. They made a deal. Roku like is some, not Amazon's like, like product. Some things don't do HBO. Some things do. What it's, the fuck? it's all like they're paid to have the Well, service. I mean, I, I, I compare yeah. Apple TV, Roku, and Chromecast. Yeah. And I determine that Chromecast is the best. The, the great thing about Chromecast is you can cast things from your computer. Yeah. So it, adds, it has an added benefit that a lot of those don't have. And I can do that with Amazon Prime. If my laptop is the one casting, but my phone can't do it. Yeah. There's no... I don't know. I mean, I, I chose Amazon Chromecast because it was the best at the time. And it was the cheapest. I, it's the cheapest, and I use Netflix and Hulu, and they both work on it. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have Amazon Prime at the time. So, just, just giving you an option. Is yeah. Like, but I mean, yeah, I like Amazon Prime a lot. I watch Hannibal now. and that's Hannibal's the best. On your recommendation. Thank Hannibal's you. Hannibal's the best. It's so good. Wait, 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 how far are you going to do it? Uh, episode 8. Oh, man. Second season just fucking rips your guts out. Yeah? Yeah. You'll love it. I love it. Oh, it's so right graphic. Now. So, that, that, that's a delayed pick of the week, but watch it for sure. Uh, by the way, I got my... I, we talked about Amazon Echo a while ago. I got my invitation. Yeah. So I'm going to order it. I, it's not going to be here for a long fucking time even when I order it. Really? Yeah, because it's all backed up, like uh, probably a couple months. But oh. when I get it, I'll ever Tell them why you're upset. Me. Well, I'm upset because my whole thing about being excited about it was that if you look up Amazon Echo, but it's basically a, a Siri that is voice activated. Right? So I say, like, I say, hey, Amazon Echo, fucking look this up or do this or add this. And it doesn't, it just activates. Yeah. And but uh, I was under the impression that you could change the vo like awake void word or whatever, the awake word. The name. Yeah, the, the, name, name. the name right now is Alexa. Mm. I wanted to change it to Beyonce because it's a badass name. Like, yo, Beyonce, add eggs to my grocery list. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You can't change it right now. It how, says, does it, how does it add something to your grocery list? So it, it, it syncs with the cloud, Adam, and uh, 
Amazon? Like, you keep your grocery list in Amazon? Well, I might now. That's the thing. You'll so, have to. Yeah, because, you because Amazon have has that fucking uh, grocery delivery service, yeah. too. Oh, so okay. you go, so, but, like, let's, so, but it does all kinds of stuff that, like, your Siri would do. So let's say you're, like, they're, yeah, commercial, well, like, you're cooking. And you go, yeah. oh shit! Like, what's um, how many how many cups are you gonna be cooking? What are you making there? You're making some, <laughs> some big meatballs, some dough, some, some dough. dough, making some dough. How many uh, mm. quarts in a cup or qu cups in a quart or some shit like that? You know? I said this in the commercial. Yeah, and then it goes, there are you know this many blanks Four. in a blank, cups in a quart, eight quarts in a cup. There's uh, point point something. Yeah, it's a point. <laughs> but so anyway, it's like that. That's nice. It's hands free. It's voice activated. It, it plays music. It's also like a Bluetooth speaker. I'll, I'll make you watch the ad and you'll see what you Yeah, but, uh, so, the difference between that and Siri is Siri, you say, Siri, remind me that on Monday I have a doctor appointment. There are essentially no difference. Thing, but but I, you don't have your, your it's, calendar. It, it's Amazon, almost, it's right? almost expanding the utility, like, utilities of it by narrowing it. <clears throat> by just making it, like, in your home, sitting there as mm -hmm. an object that's okay. voice activated, you'll use it in a different way than you do your phone. Like, I, I constantly forget to even use Siri. But if I just had the stick here that was plugged in, that was I go Alexa, do this shit, yeah, it's or play nice. this song, and you can add shit to your cart from Amazon. So yeah. you're like you, you're like, oh, my, the batteries are dead. Alexa, add AA batteries to my cart. Yeah, and then on Amazon they're on your cart, and then you it's, can just. It's up to Wikipedia, so it answers questions. And when you get Amazon, you get automatic Amazon Music now. Which so you're is kind play, of like Spotify. So you can Beyonce, play Beyonce. Yeah, <laughs> and then what a what a world, right? But I it, hopefully they'll add new wake words eventually. Now that I'm thinking about it, I get why they don't give you too much flexibility. Why? Like, if you call it fuck stick, and then people film videos of, hey, fuck stick, what am I doing here? And it responds. It'll look bad for the company. I'll bet you they don't want to, like, mm. it, it, you know what I mean? That's interesting, actually. Yeah, I never that's thought that's that. my bet, now that I've really thought about it. Mm. So, hey, fuck stick. That's a butt great plug. Name. Hey, butt plug. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, dildo butt. Hey, Adam Blum. Yeah, <laughs> I would definitely call it. Name him. it Adam Blum. <laughs> name it Adam Blum. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I'll let you guys know how that is. Um, how much was it? It's well, so if you're an Amazon subscriber and you, I requested the invite and I got the invite. It's a hundred dollars, which I think is a pretty cool price to like this. Without the subscription or without the invite, it's two hundred, which I don't think is worth it. But because we got the invite, both me and Chloe did, we're gonna buy it for a hundred and just split it fifty. Who's Chloe? My girlfriend Chloe. <laughs> I'm I'm going out with her steady. <laughs> we're going steady. So, yeah. I hope you guys get married because it'll be really bad for the podcast if Chloe's not in it anymore. My wife, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, Chloe. All vegetarians, foodies, and gastronauts kindly avert your eyes. You can't get juiciness like this from soy or quinoa. This is not Greek yogurt. Nor will that ever be kale. In its lifetime, it won't be deconstructed or infused.
And while it is massive, its ego is not. And therefore needs no introduction. ba da ba 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 All right. So that played allegedly on an NFL game, it said. Right? Yeah. The well, source was today. NFL. So, I mean, I mean, I guess they were for a football watching audience, I suppose. But it's going to be repeated. It's not like the commercial yeah. I mean, they're keeping their target audience in mind, though. But, yeah, the commercial is uh, just kind of like, we're not, I don't really get it. Well, it's, if you, you thought it was kind of uh, insulting towards vegetarians or ripping on them. A little, I mean, a little bit. It is. It is a little bit. It's, it's a little bit. bit. Yeah. I, I see it. I saw it more as... There's partially that, but also they said the kale thing, like this will never be kale, and like they kind of make fun of some of the standard like yeah. food adjectives they give to whatever, I forget what they said in the ad, but you know, they kind of just make fun of the pompous menus and stuff like that. Like, I didn't really see it as targeting vegetarians, I was just kind of part of it. Yeah. Well, I, I thought it was entertaining. I think, I think of this, and, and you're you're the marketing fucking big dick hotshot. I'm right? such, I got a huge dick when it comes to marketing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is, who am I gaining as an advertiser when I put this commercial out. And it's like, all you're doing is is probably hurting, like, it, as a vegetarian, you might go to McDonald's and get some, like, some kind of thing that isn't meat on it, right? Yeah. Rare, but I mean, Yeah, they, they are very, they're very anti-vegetarian. But yeah. yeah, like Burger King, I will go to Burger King and get a veggie burger, definitely. But if they play a commercial like this, you're, I would never go You're out. Them. All you're doing yeah. is alienating those people. Exactly, they are. And if you are somebody who appreciates good food, now I'm just thinking, like, well, <laughs> fucking, now I'm just thinking, fuck, like, I might as, I might as well. <laughs> dog. Don't worry about I it. might as well go somewhere else. It's like now I just feel insulted. Like I don't feel like you're gaining anybody. All yeah, I'm person. really not sure who this is for. It's yeah. the stand. It's the exact uh, prototypical football ad. Yeah. It's exactly the same as those truck ads they play during football. Where this, there's ex an exact one with the. Dennis Leary, like, narrating it or whatever. This will never get good like, gas mileage? Yes, exactly. He's like, oh, this is, you know, this is always, like, it's, always it's a hard nose like, foot, you know, truck that I'm never going to, like, I don't need cushy seats. Like, it's, that's exactly the same like, ad, and that's what, that's all they show in football ads. At least those ads, truck, like, truck ads, like, they're playing equal footing. You know, like, they're all kind yeah. of trying to outdo that to each other. Whereas, I feel like, the, the fast food places aren't trying to out anti, like, foodie, vegetarian each other. So, it's a weird, it, it kind of reminds me of when Dr. Pepper... Did those Dr. Pepper 10 ads? Do you remember those? No. no. Dr. Pepper ten, Dr. Pepper had a drink came out. It was like 10 calorie Dr. Pepper. It's okay. like a diet Dr. Pepper. Oh. But it was like, this is not for women. It's for men. Like tough, tough guys. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's like, well, wh why? Like men, men can still drink it. But you don't I do remember be, that. You don't I just say that. fuck you to women about it. It was yeah. a weird. I mean, I hate, yeah. I, I hate this ad, to be honest. I yeah. hate it. Like there's no reason to make an ad like this. It, it doesn't make any sense. I don't see anybody who anybody choose McDonald's over anything else because of an ad like this. Mm -hmm. I like the part where they make fun of the pompous uh, food, well, food name things. I like that. That appeals to me. I because I that pisses me off when. But I it's see not it pompous. It's not. A, it's not pompous though. Is the thing like kale? Eating kale isn't pompous. It's it's an almost good direction of being like this is like it almost feels like you're trying to say this is a classic. This is what you're used to. You know, like yeah, this is yeah. this is something safe. But the problem is they didn't do it right. They're doing it like dicks. Yeah. Like like if you eat kale, you're an asshole. Yeah. You know, like it's not you're it's not a, eating yogurt isn't pompous. <laughs> eating kale isn't pompous. And McDonald's did have like a health campaign for a while. Yeah, yeah. they do do that. So it's it's yeah. just this it's really just NFL like football commercial, and it, it's really it, it's it's pathetic. But I now think. the commercial's out in the zeitgeist, and now it's a problem. But I mean, I, I get I get what it's you know, You're saying Malone that like it's kind of funny how it's like oh like you know it's not kale. Oh, this isn't. This won't be found in some food magazine, but like at the same now, time. Now, as a matter of fact, they should put fucking kale in burgers because it's green and it's lettuce, but it's way better for you than lettuce. <laughs> I mean, it's a good idea, well, McDonald's. It's, and it's, it's hot. Different, different issue. It's, it's just popular. a. It's just a weird. Yeah, it's, it's almost, pretty funny if they did actually make a Big Mac with kale. It's like, almost, they have this commercial that said this will never be kale. <laughs> yeah, and then there is a kale one. Kale. Save this in time. <laughs> That'll be yeah, fifteen years from now on Reddit. Yeah. This commercial <laughs> McDonald's says there'll never be kale, <laughs> and I guess they bring this out. Kale burger. So I just thought it was weird. And McDonald's has a history of making just bad ads. They, you know what they do, and people don't know that, but McDonald's, if you think back on McDonald's' ads, they have that, <clears> that <throat> they use it in this, that yeah. ba -da -ba -ba -ba. that guy does it like a fucking big caveman, too. Yeah. He sings their stupid little fucking theme song. And they're song. like, they're, they're too pretentious. They go, we're not, we're not even going to say what it is. You just hear the theme song, you know it's McDonald's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had, we all, we like to see you smile yeah. campaign. I remember, who was the, yeah, the Maddox, the best, best page of the year, where said a thing where he's like, McDonald's really like I'm loving it. You know it's an anagram for alien vomit, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. loving it is the other one. And they had, so bad. Did somebody say McDonald's? They always look cheap. Another one they That's had. The other thing. Those were all. Those no, were all. Did somebody say Arby's. 
No, somebody say McDonald's. I don't know. But there was there was a so Did somebody say McDonald's? Arby's. We'll look it up now. Right, right now. Right now. Right now. So like during the podcast. Yeah, you keep talking. That's why the three dudes. Like five hour energy. Five I want hour, you to be. I want you to be wrong right now, live. Five hour energy has cheap looking kind of shitty commercials, but that's their get their bit a little bit. You know, it's kind of oh, being right. funny. Right. Did somebody say McDonald's campaign? There you go. Wow. You fucked up. Did somebody say McDonald's? Oh, that's Arby's. You yeah. fucked up. Well, McDonald's you fucked up. Fucked he up. thinks that's Arby's. Yeah. Yeah. McDonald's won't fuck it up. Gotta come back next week. So, yeah, so they've had history just bad, cheap looking, yeah. weird, awkward commercials. So, no, what we're getting at here is they had a good ad. They did. And we're going to play, we're not going to play that one because you actually no, you watch look it. it up. But you can watch, I'll link to it in the, if you go to Agree or Die and look at the podcast uh, yeah. page, we put all of our links there and, and it videos. You what's can the see name, it. What's the name of it? It's like Adversaries or like something? Yeah, I, I don't know what it's called, but it's, it's, does it say in the link? It does not say in the link. Okay. Well, yeah, so it's basically, the, the commercial's really cute. It almost looks like an Apple commercial. It's got like a trendy song. It has kind of cute, like, uh, cartoony look and feel to it, where it basically is like enemies are bonding over McDonald's. And, and so they have Batman and the Joker, and yeah. there's a, the beach woman and a shark. Yep. There's the robots that box. Yep. And there's a bunch of, like, you know, there's a Republican Kruger, and Jason, and Democrat. Republicans Donald, and Democrats. And Bowser and Mario. Mario and Bowser. Yeah, and I'm like, th this the budget I'm like licensing on this commercial had to be extreme because they got Batman in there. They got, you know, Bowser and Mario. It's, they got. It's they should have gone a little more extreme. Yeah. <clears throat> what, what, Hitler and. Yeah, like Hitler, Hitler in America, Hitler, 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 Hitler and the Jews, Hitler and the Jews, all the Jews, Hitler and Hitler 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 sharing, sharing fries, like Palestinians and Israel, like all just really extreme. Yeah. <laughs> God and the devil, just like yeah. yeah, all the way. But I, I thought it was a great commercial. It was, I couldn't it was cute. It. Yeah. Yeah, it was cute. It was a good it was commercial. Cute. It was a good one, and it was like people were having fun. Like, what was their, what was their yeah. point? You know, everyone, everyone, likes McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah, everyone likes McDonald's. Yeah, everyone likes McDonald's. Yeah, you could you could bond with people on it. It was it was a, you know it was memorable, funny, yeah. mm -hmm. and McDonald's is, at this point they don't need to like make a point. You know, yeah. they need to get in your face and make a memorable commercial. It, That's it, all they got to do. And I'm somebody who maybe I'm more aware of it. I always I always think like when I see a really good commercial, it makes me want to go somewhere almost honestly because I yeah. want like reward that commercial. Yep. And at one point I was like, shit, McDonald's, it's a legit commercial. I'm most proud of you. I want to like get a. They haven't had a good commercial for. Ever. So, Probably ever. Yeah, they're so awkward. And they're <laughs> awful. And this, what we talked about previously, is yeah. a great example of an awful commercial McDonald's has made. Just, they're so, bad. At least, now they, did it. at least now they figured it out a little bit. Finally, so they net even out. Yeah. Oh, we're not timing. I don't have my timer on. We'll put it on. That's about what? Maybe a tenner? Yeah, we're not too worried yeah. about it. All right. So, well, yeah. should we? What should we do next? Or should we talk about the? Uh, should we talk about the piece of shit hotel? Imagine <sighs> the this hotel. This fucking hotel, man. So. Like a here's the story. Here's where the story goes. I, I saw this story, okay, I, I forgot where. And there's this guy who, whoever he is, he thought it'd be nice on Christmas to get a, uh, my animals are going berserk. Can you? They, he's gonna get a bunch of homeless people uh, a hotel room for the night, for Christmas. Sweet. And, and let him get a shower and you know he had he had a prepaid room service bill he had all kinds of stuff going on where he was just being nice. And he checked with the hotel before doing He this. went ahead of the time to the hotel, the um, what the hotel called? Allegedly, he went with the hotel before. I don't know. It is allegedly. Click the article. Well, I, I read it. I don't want to click right, it out, but a well, hotel. Whatever. So the late, it'll be in the you know if you go on the page, you'll see all the whole story. Please do. So this hotel, it's in New York. He went in there, talked to the concierge or whatever, told him I got six homeless people. I want to put them in this big suite, uh, you know, for one night and have them have a good time. He got it all okay. He prepaid. Everything was all set up. Then. Three hours before check-in time, he gets a phone call from the hotel. Says they're going to cancel the reservation. They're not going to honor it, yeah. and they're not going to let the homeless people in. Three hours, and the, it's not like Christmas Day. Yeah. And the reasoning I read part of it was like they're not going to have IDs, and we won't get people. Uh, you know, we won't let people check in with IDs. Well, no, 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 don't even go. No, no, don't even, oh, go ahead. Don't even go there because they did not say that. They called him and said they're not going to let him in because these people are looking seedy. And what if they they rob or rape one of our guests? Well, yes, they said that. That's what the he said they said. That's what he said they said. But then there are even, I'm saying that even their official statement yeah. is fucked up. Yeah. Because their official statement is, what if they don't have IDs? Well, you don't know that they won't have IDs because they haven't gone there yet. They haven't checked in. It's three hours before checking time. No, they were they, they were checking in. At three hours before checking time? They, they, they said they all didn't have IDs. Um, and then they said they did have IDs. Yeah. But this is all hearsay. Yeah. But the official statement of the hotel is they... The safety of our guests is of utmost importance, mm -hmm. and we don't let anybody without an ID in our hotel. But the the claim here, and the the, new, the article doesn't like follow up with the homeless people whether or not they had IDs. Yeah. But they said they did have IDs. 
But anyway, the guy, the guy who made the reservation said that that wasn't like there was no stipulation for that at the yeah. time. You know, like that wasn't said, and that's not what they told him on the phone. But anyways, whatever. The thing is, this is a fucked up thing to do. Yeah. They agreed to do it. Then they double back. If you were checking a hotel too, like like if I checked into a hotel with my girlfriend Chloe, which I, you know, <laughs> did in New York, she showed her ID. I stood there like a fucking jabroni the whole time. I could have been a homeless person dressed in a nice shirt. Yeah. And then I could just why walk up with her. Now they never checked my fucking ID, right? My girlfriend Chloe's got an ID. I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, so, so, okay, first thing I do when I saw the story is I'm gonna go to the star one star, I'm gonna give him one star review. Yeah. Why not? Tweet him on who, on tweet. I should tweet, I should have done it too, but I, I just, go, I Googled him and I'm like, review. I'm gonna review him, give him one star review, and I'm just linked a link to the story. That was my review, is read the story. And then I saw that there was already like 13 other reviews and lots of reviews for this. Like, these people wouldn't even let these homeless people in, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, bad move. yeah, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Trying to get yourself bombed? So I recommend everybody go one star review. <clears throat> fuck them. Fuck this yeah. hotel. Unlike fuck them out of business. us, who should give a five star review. Right? We should get, don't confuse that with us. Yeah. We deserve five star reviews <laughs> only. We would. Should we let, would you let a homeless guy in your house? If somebody paid for the room, absolutely. If he had a heart of gold. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you know, it, I, my house is not the same as a hotel, though. The, the, it's not the same. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm. If my house was a bed and breakfast that I was renting out. Yeah, to, exactly. You know, if my house is a hotel and somebody paid for a room, then yeah, you can have the room. I'm not gonna be like, oh, sorry, your shirt isn't nice enough. You can't stay, even though it's. I mean, didn't they see Pretty Woman? That's just fucked up. That's right there. Pretty Woman. Pretty, pretty Woman. Because she was a prostitute. Don't judge a book by its cover. She's a prostitute. And she goes into a store and they just believe she doesn't have any money. Big mistake. So they treat her Huge. like shit. Huge mistake. Yeah. Because she did have money. You work on commission, right? She was backing shit up with uh, her, with Dennis. Richard Gear. Richard Gear's money. Yeah. <laughs> she had that Richard Gear money. You didn't see Pretty Woman or what? I've never seen it. Look at this really? guy. Hasn't seen you Pretty Woman. Seen pretty woman? No. Look, motherfucker. You gotta see Pretty Woman. Problem. That's a pick. Oh. That's one. Of, that's one of our picks. Yeah. Now. I was. In, I went to a hotel in Chicago. I stayed there for New Year's Eve one, one year. Yeah. The the hotel is where they shot the elevator scene from a Pretty. You know, pretty woman. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, so I was in the, ho the elevator, and the door, the bell guy, the fucking guy who pushed you the buttons, because that's how fancy it was. Wow, a bellboy. Yeah, bellboy. He goes, this is where a pretty woman was filmed. And I looked, I looked behind me, and I'm like, holy fucking shit, you're right. This is you remember what it looked like? Yeah. I wouldn't know, see, if somebody told me that. It's, anyway. very, it's very distinctive. Like, I, I had to, like, fucking, because there's a little seat huh. there, and that's like, you'll oh, notice the seat. Yeah. See. So, yeah. watch Pretty Woman, you asshole. Come on. Yeah. It's a good movie. Pick yeah. a, that's a pick. For uh, sure. Is it good? It's great. It is good. It's I, good. I've seen it recently. Yeah. I haven't seen it that recently. I Rich, watched it in River. River. Richard Gere's got so much. He's dripping swagoo. Swagoo. For real. So, yeah. Is it on Hulu? Probably. I, I it's got to be somewhere. <laughs> nah, fuck Hulu. If yeah, I'm, it's not on Hulu. Fuck Hulu. <laughs> fuck Hulu. We're not going to Hulu. So, anyway, fuck that hotel. We'll. we'll if you can All right, Malone. Well, well, you're up, man. You got this topic you brought in. Okay. All right. Um, I read this interesting article. In my uh, allegedly interesting, my my <laughs> yeah, I'm the only one, I'm the only one who read it. Uh, I read it. It's in my favorite uh, my favorite periodical, The Economist. It was about the future of work, and they were basically pointing out many things where they think that in the future work is going to be different. Like right now, all three of us, we all work for the man. Yeah. Like we work for a company. Like uh, you know, it's got bosses and all sorts of that shit. Like Can you pause you real quick. Yes. The hotel name is Hotel Dupont in Wellington. What's Wilmington? Where's that? Who the fuck knows where Wilmington is? I don't fucking know. Delaware. Does it say what state Del it is? Delaware. How did you just know that? Or you read I saw it. Oh, Jesus. You're you're Hotel missing. DuPont in Wilmington. Yeah, Wilmington, Delaware. Delaware. Right here, right here. Look them up. Give them one-star review. Just link them to our podcast. Hotel space D-U space P-O-N-T. DuPont. Like the like the brand of, of, of uh, everything. DuPont. Yeah. Like the biggest chemical company? Yeah. yeah. DuPont. So, sorry. It's continue. probably different. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. We work so, anyways. Yeah, the, we all work for the man. Uh, the point of this article I read, and I thought it was something I've been thinking about lately, is they said there seems to be more avenues opening up where you don't need to be working for the man. Like Uber is the biggest one currently. Like a lot of people are making their entire livings by driving, you know, uh, running an Uber, their own kind of Uber taxi, like on their own hours for their own time. And there's many other services that they pointed out in this thing that I was reading. Um, there's one... There's a service that will come and clean your apartment, like on demand. You just open up the app and say, come clean my place, and they charge you for it. There's one that will cook a nice, like, home-cooked dinner and deliver it to your house. Oh. And there's ones that will buy you groceries already. Like, you can do that from Amazon, so Hand Amazon's Handyman interesting. type shit. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Handyman was another one. Like, you can just kind of rent a handyman, handyman to come and repair, you know, whatever your things are. There's that, what's the thing called where you, uh, 
you order a box of clothes and you try on, you keep what you like, and then you send back the rest. You've heard of this one? Yeah, but that's not a perk. Like, yeah, that's right. That's not anyone's job. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. That's just a monthly box of subscri yeah. subscription, which are so hot right now. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. So that, that they're saying that... Yeah. They're, they're just seeing this happening. And there's one, uh, I forget the name of it, but it was actually a law firm that does all... That's like, you don't buy someone on retainer. Like, you need some particular project done, and mm -hmm. you hire... You know, it's like an app where you go and sell your legal services working for yourself. Interesting. There, you there know, are... Uh, like temp, temp agencies that kind of do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess that that's not too different. But the Uber one, Uber is a new industry that yeah. emerged, and yeah, I see a lot and of a, Airbnb is yes, one where you Airbnb, can rent out your house yeah. or rent out anything you want. <clears throat> one one of the first ones was like this was almost like in college. Uh, there were places that, like, let's say you want to get Taco Bell delivery. Taco Bell doesn't deliver, obviously. Right. What they would do is they were they would go get you Taco Bell. They would deliver it to your place. And they would charge you like a fee based on the price mm -hmm. of what you got, or based on the distance. Yeah, they have it. It's uh, Bite Squad. That's yeah. one of them. There's another one in town. I see. Yeah, Bite Squad. Yeah. And just, I forgot what the other one yeah. is. These are. these are really pioneering when they when they were starting to do it. Like pioneering. they were just college kids doing this. Yeah, it was like this was 2007. So they would like just leave a PP of some papers, like one Taco Bell delivered to your room. Yep, and they even shared a website, and then it started like getting kind of bigger. Smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this was a while ago. Yeah, that's good shit. <clears throat> so this, yeah, but this shit is becoming like our friend uh, Toa Nelson. I believe Toy was it was a just an Uber Nelson. driver or didn't do something like he did a little Uber, yeah. yeah. Toa Nelson, Toa, Toa Nelson, Toa Nelson. <laughs> Toa Nelson. <Yeah. laughs> I get it. <laughs> so it, it is a it's a very common thing. It's a great it's a great way. Even Chloe, my girlfriend, who is his name Chloe, yeah, when she was unemployed for a little bit looking for a job, she was looking into Uber very seriously. Just like fuck, I can do this. <clears throat> she looked at you know like the economics of it, how much you pay, like what it the cost. Seems were. pretty good. I mean, yeah. if I didn't have a job, I would. I think I would like to do I that. took an Uber once and uh, I love the guy was telling me that he does Uber and Lyft and Lyft together. Yeah. And he was talking about he does both because it maximizes your amount of rides. Yeah. And he was talking about how, you know, some people like you, when you request an Uber, it like knows where you are and then it yep. finds the closest driver and then pings. They them. come so quick when yeah. I've had to. Well, because they are close to you. One, yeah, of my least, why, uh, one of my least favorite things about living in the Twin Cities is that getting a cab is impossible. It's a fucking joke. Like I used to live, you remember I used to live with like Jake and those guys? Yeah. If I were to cab there, consistently, they'd be like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, two hours later. Mm -hmm. No, not even a fucking joke. Yeah. Like yeah, it cabs was are, yeah, the cabs, worst. Standard they, cabs are terrible. The great thing about Uber is that you on your app, you have the GPS that's just showing you like where the cab where is. Where it is, yeah. yeah. And the cool, other cool thing too is you can rate, you do, you rate the driver mm -hmm. and they rate you as a, as a customer. Mm -hmm. So if I puke in your car and I'm a fucking shithead, I get a one-star review, you'll get picked up less often. So it's a great like two-way system of being like, don't be a scumbag. It's a really good system. It's I love it. And you know, it, the, the cab companies really drop a ball on not not getting on this. Yeah. There's no reason cab companies can't be doing what Uber does. The problem is the cab companies are fucking the worst. They're the worst. It, South Park did an episode about this. Do they? I don't Pretty much, where they were like, the cab companies were all trying to, it was Timmy, the handicap you know, kid, mm -hmm. had a thing called Handicart. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it was called a handy car. Yeah. And he was, it was basically Uber, and the cab companies were all coming together to try to like bust them apart. And somebody was like, why don't you just adapt your business model and try doing some better? He's like, are you fucking stupid? Like, we're not going to do that. Yeah, He's I like, mean, that's, that's basically what's happening. That's typical of, you know, <clears throat> the old the old guard yeah. industries. That was one of the, was it you and me with the topic where can, can these companies save themselves from technology coming yeah. and getting them? Some can, some can yeah. and they could have. But instead, they chose not to, and now they're fucked. Boy, the cab ones, so though, I don't think they could have really done that. Because, like, so here's, yeah. so well, they have a legitimate concern in that they pay all the cab companies and all the in the the country, like in every city, they pay these these very expensive licensing yeah. fees and regulation, and they need to get inspected and all these things to actually run cab service because okay. we have regulations. So now Uber comes along with some fucking app based out of San Francisco. And they let anyone go run a cab, basically. Yeah. Well, and sure. the cab companies say, well, how is this fair? Like, how does someone No, else... I mean, th there's, so there's there's that they, there. it's, it's not really reasonable to think that they'd start, like, hey, let's let's fuck all our cabbies. Let's just start making an app and have everyone no, sign No, but up. they do have cabbies. The difference is, though, is you have an app that is, like... Yes, and yeah. someone shows up well, quick. Yeah, yeah show yeah. up quick. Yeah. And they rate each other, yeah. and you have a rating, and your cabbies, like... Mm -hmm. oh, cabbies are... Well, they're, 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 they're shit. Corruption. Full of corruption. Yeah. yeah like, and, and you have... So, yeah, it's, instead of the cabbies sitting in dispatch, fucking jerking off... You know what's another nice thing about Uber? Is it links to your checking account, or your PayPal, or something. Yes, you don't have to have fun, fumble with your... Yeah, so, when, I, yes. so when, I'm, when I'm in a cab, and they're like, oh, sorry, <clears> I don't <throat> take cards, which is 
a lot. In some state, in some places, it's a law that you have to have a credit card option. But I'm like, oh, we don't, I don't need cash. Well, I don't have to fucking deal with that because literally, I've already paid. It's just out of my account. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's yeah. done. Yeah. Like, I mean, I agree that the like regulations are in this case, I think are good because you're trusting somebody with your life when you get in the car. You don't want a serial killer getting, you know, driving an Uber. You know, who's picking you up. Yeah. And that's one of the concern. And cab companies do it. They screen test other people. They make sure their driving records are clean. Blah blah blah. And Uber does it too. A little bit. Yeah. You have to pass tests. So I, mean, I, and it, I agree. It isn't fair that, that cab companies have to do government regulations to do the same job. But that's not the issue. The issue is that the, the, the system is better when yeah. Uber did it. There's a minimum level of customer service mm -hmm. that you expect yeah. as, a, as a customer. And you don't get that from cab drivers. In fact, I've been nothing but mostly insulted by cab drivers in my life. And this Uber guy who took me, he said the owners of Uber, the reason they started is because they hated cab drivers. They hated cabs so much. Like, there's got to be a better way to do this. Mm -hmm. and, and they thought about it, and there was. In Madison, the cab drivers, there's a one really popular cab service It's called Badger Cab. Bad like Badger Cab. Badger Cab. Like, okay. Yeah. The, the cab drivers were usually pretty nice, but the dispatcher was like the same dispatcher always. The guy you call, fucking biggest asshole ever, all the time. Maybe like, that's part of the draw. No, it wasn't part of the draw. It was like, <laughs> what do you, there's no draw if you gotta get a cab and there's no one else to fucking call. Okay. You know? So like, I fucking hated dealing with them. So just be able to get one on my app is right there half the battle in Madison. You know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'd never call fucking Badger Cab if I had Uber. Mm hmm. So now you've done new Uber. Yeah, I love it. And here in the cities, it's like, well, we don't have a subway or a great transportation system. I get Uber. Uber's fantastic. And it's reasonably priced. It's beautiful. I, I love it. So, but yeah. And I, I'm looking forward to more things like that that will supplant shitty experiences I have that I don't even think about. Well, so what do you, what do you think about these, like, these apps that are kind of, do you, what do you think they're doing? They're cutting out the middleman? I mean, these jobs still exist more or less, right? <clears throat> so it's not like they're... Well, the point kind of going back to the original reason I brought this up yeah. is they said the in the interesting thing about Uber is it lets people do it in their free time. Like maybe somebody works a part-time job, mm -hmm. you know, but then when you have free time, you just go drive for Uber and make mm -hmm. as much money, probably more than your part-time job. So I think it's kind of, it kind of fills a void, you know, mm -hmm. it, seem, it pretty much seems good for everyone. It so lets I'm, you I'm, I'm excited to see where else that could go. Like So, with, and what, what crazy is there needs to be probably some regulations with it. Well, there are, there I mean, are some. I don't, I don't think it's fair that they don't have to have. I mean, they say it's ride sharing, but that's bullshit. You're not sharing your ride. Yeah. You're running a cab out of your car. Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. You should need at least some. Or like, I, I don't want to just bring any <clears throat> handyman in my house and be like, fix this, and if you, yeah. you know, there's no guarantee. So the comp I mean, but that's I mean, the review, the reviews are are yeah. that. So and to some extent, so the companies that are running it are the ultimate. How how <laughs> soon or has it already happened? And comment if you know. Are we going to get a CSI episode or like a you know some kind of a show episode mm -hmm. where there's an Uber driver that's killing everybody? Oh, you know and what I mean. Law and Order SVU has got to be on <laughs> right? Like, like he's an Uber driver and he's really clever and he built up a good reputation at first, and then he started murdering everybody he picks up. And the police are like, "Well, who could it be? Oh, this guy's got five stars. He's definitely he's a five star Uber. Yeah, five star Uber people. Yeah, they, fil they filter it for the two star people first yeah. and then just totally miss them. That's yeah, they get yeah, exactly. Look for all the bad drivers who get bad reviews. No, it's this guy's a great driver. Yeah. Right so yeah, yeah. I, I think it's or or an Uber driver who murders anybody who gives him a bad review. Oh shit, that's like us. He I just mean, is a passionate Uber driver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So so yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's a very interesting industry. The whole <clears> idea of I, I do like that kind of goes back to our minimum wage topic about well, if the, if these industries are prevalent and you get a skill, then maybe you don't need a minimum wage job that right. you can live off of. Yep. These you can find things like this to fill your gaps. Fuck, anybody can drive Anybody can drive a car. Exactly. Yeah. Anybody can drive, be an Uber driver. Yeah. Literally, yeah. anybody. You have to have a car. Yeah. Well, you yeah. have to have car insurance. Anybody, right. anybody can go get groceries. He's right. People. And mm -hmm. yeah, you need to have a car for a lot of them. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I mean, they're, you're right. Yeah, there you need a car for a lot of them, but fuck, you, you, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. No. For all those, you probably need a car. Well, let's say well, for the handyman one, you can take a bus. Yeah, you the handyman one, yeah. actually, you could yeah. get by. Yeah. If you, but you need to know how to be a handyman. If yeah. you know that, you probably handy it's, it's almost stuff. like you probably have a job. If you're Craigslist already does this sometimes. Like Craigslist has people like need, wanted this. Mm -hmm. You know, like Craigslist, it just takes a sketch out of them a little bit. Fuck Craigslist, by the way. That place is sketchy as fuck. I that yeah. site disgusts me. I it's can't. Just, I cannot yeah, visit. You hate the design. Of it. I can't visit. Every time I go to the site, yeah, I go, "What is? What is? What, is where really am I? Bad. Come on, it's I got It's not fine. I can't use it. It's your. It's the basic. Discuss. Zero design. Well, that's the weird yeah, part. I, I want to like, go to that site. I want a site that like cares about what when, the way when it looks. When first start, when Craigslist first started, <clears throat> it's like if you get a guy that smells like shit. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, well, keep in mind, Craigslist. I mean, they only make money from ads. So, so why? Give me a million sites to make money from ads that look great. 
Whatever. They I only make money from ads. Whatever. I, I gotta forgive them because they're like the most traffic set of the internet that makes only money from ads. Poor Let's babies. See, what, what do we got up next here? Uh, well, uh, Microsoft give me a free game. So how about that? I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, well, you don't want to talk about it. They've been doing it. That's true. <laughs> Look, <laughs> let me let me harken back. Let me harken back. Harken. Uh, harken. Whoa! Can you look that up? Back. I don't know that word. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to Siri. Uh, uh, Alexa, what is harken? A classic uh, <laughs> Krasny tirade. You tell me what harken means. Like 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 Alan, like, Alan Harkin. Allude. Uh, you know, tie it tie it into the. I don't know how call, to call, call, back, call back, back to back. Okay. Harkin back. Harkin call back. Harkin. Harkin. Right. Call, yeah, it's a callback. Okay. Harkin back, girl. So, <laughs> one time I was fucked over badly by uh, by Microsoft Xbox Live specifically. Yeah. I was fucked over badly, and I, this was never on the podcast. But this is a big this is a big thing for me. What happened was my Xbox DVD drive broke, and my it, it worked fine. But I did a red ring. Red ring. No, they just I couldn't. It wouldn't roar, like spin up. Uh huh. I mean, the system turned on. I can use Xbox Live just fine, but I couldn't. It wouldn't spin up discs, so I had to get a new Xbox. Okay. So then I had to migrate all my saved games over, and I had no way to do this. Okay. And they had a cloud system, but the cloud is only 500 megabytes of space. What do you find, Harkin? What does it mean? <clears throat> um, to give respectful attention. Listen. What the fuck? What are you clicking on? What is this shit? He's just gonna pronounce it. No, I don't want to pronounce it. I want to hear. I want to hear it. I don't know how to say Harkin. Put that shit away. Look, look. You're fu- you fu- I can't keep talking to you doing this in front of my face. Get this uh, shit out of here. Uh, what the hell was I even saying? Okay, so I had to move. I had to migrate my Xbox library over to a new to the new Xbox. So the the cloud service they offer is only 500 megabytes of space, which is not enough. That ain't shit. It's nothing. Okay. But then they also said on their own FAQ page that you can use any USB device to migrate your data. True. But first, you need to turn it into an Xbox storage device. Also, awesome. by plugging, you got to plug it in, and it, it, it formats it as an Xbox device. Yeah. I mean, whatever. I, I have a DVD, I mean, a USB stick, whatever. I plug in an 8 gig USB stick, which I find hilarious because I have an 8 gig USB stick, and Xbox Live gives me 500 megabytes of cloud storage. Yeah. My dick doesn't fit in a 500 megabytes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. I, I, I format my USB stick to be Xbox. I put my saved games on it. Now Xbox has this pro- has a protection thing where you can't copy your saved games. You can only cut and paste, right? So you think about the, the consequences of when you say cut all your saved games and put them somewhere. Oh, it's yeah, terrifying. Yeah, you exactly. If somebody fucks up, you're tossed. <clears throat> but that's the way it is because they don't want you like replicating your data. You can copy a DLC that way and give it to a friend. They don't want you to do that. So I cut all my games. And I put them on my drive. I put it in the new Xbox. No data on your on your stick. So then I put it back in the original drive, and there's still no data there. So I cut all my games, and that's it. All my saved games are cut. Period. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. Time you lost all your. So I lost all my Mass. I lost probably 600 hours of Mass Effect saves. Yeah. I lost 40 plus hours of Assassin's Creed, which are just the most relevant games I play. Yeah. And then back five fucking years. Yeah. So I'm very upset because I got the instructions off their own FAQ page. So I called them to fucking rage. Okay, pretty much. And I'm expecting them to give me like a lot of money, pretty much. Not money, but you know, Xbox Live credits. Like, here's a lot of months free. Here's a free, you know, Xbox credits, whatever. Here's a hand job. Whatever, you know what I mean? Because first off, I've been Xbox Live Gold member since fucking 2006. Okay, like I've since they had a service. I've been I've been a member of paying a monthly fee for this shit. Okay, and they can see that on there. They can see Alex Krasny has been with us forever. We can take care of him. You know what I mean? They gave me two months free of Xbox Live for my trouble, which is about an eight dollar value. Wow, eight dollars, huh? Is that what I'm worth? It's more than eight. It's like twenty four. What? How much is it? It's it's a hundred dollars a year. Well, if you buy like oh, a is big, that it? yeah, if you buy like a big package, but huh. I mean, if you if you're paying monthly, it's like ten bucks a month. I'm not paying. I mean, I'm buying a, well, okay, twenty but twenty dollars now. Sure. What? I mean, I'm always paying. I'm always paying annually. It's, it's hundred dollars a year. That's how much it is. At least what, as far as I remember. So they won that one. Oh, they won. Yeah, they got you good. They, they they fucked me and gave me nothing. They, they got, got you nothing game. for it. They got your games and they took my exactly. <laughs> so one of my biggest complaints at that point was how stupid it is for them not to give me their pretend money to do whatever. Like, what can you spend your Xbox credits on? Especially three years ago. I'll tell you what it is. It's on DLC for games you already own. It's on costumes and Xbox skins and a bunch of stupid <laughs> shit that nobody would ever spend money on. Fucking God help you if you have. Skins. Yeah, like, oh, I want my little little stupid avatar to have a hoodie 
instead of a suit, <laughs> whatever. That's what you spend your money on over there. Well, the problem for them is there's so many fucking people who probably had this issue. They were like, well, we, if we give everybody a, a credit... We'll give everybody bankrupt. what? A free fucking hoodie on their fake avatar? My point is, they'll, they'll go bankrupt because they have so many issues. There's no bankruptcy money. because the money's they don't, fake. Yeah, they don't spend anything. Yeah, yeah, the beauty of it is... They could give it to everyone. I can put all the fucking hats on my little fucking guy mm-hmm. all my life, and the Xbox will never go broke. Oh, I see what all they gotta do is keep my eyeball stuck to the screen. That's what doesn't <laughs> make any sense. Like, they can't lose any money. <laughs> They can only keep me sucked in. I like, see, see. how hard is it for me? If they gave me, let's just throw a really ridiculous, they gave me a million Xbox Live dollars. A million? A million dollars. Right. A lo- free lifetime Xbox Live usage. I can do whatever the fuck I want and buy all the hoodies I want and like my little stupid guy and buy all the DLC. They don't lose any money for this. All they do is ensure I will never leave their system. Which like, why are they doing it so wrong? Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, back to what I was talking about an hour ago. Finally, they're giving away games for free to Xbox Live members. But you know why they're doing it. Why? Because PlayStation did it first. Well, so they're under pressure to do it because PlayStation has been doing it so well. Because PlayStation's so smart and Xbox yeah. so fucking dumb. But they're not even, the, my thing with Xbox is they're not even doing it that well. What do you mean? Well, they're giving away two games a month. One game in the first half of the month, which disappears in the 15th. Okay. And then another game the second half of the month. Now the games they're giving away, for the most part, are kind of shit. I mean, they're like, like right now, you know what the game is right now? No idea. It's like ATV versus MTX. It's like a ATV, like you know what that is? An the ATV? fucking all-terrain vehicle? Yes, it's an all-terrain <laughs> vehicle racing game. Okay. That yeah. is that is the game this month. Thanks. That was impressive. That's a, yeah, that's a dumb, that's a, that, I, that's would buy, I wouldn't even get the game for The game like a couple months ago was Halo Reach. That's, which, that's a real it's game. It's a great game. That's, yeah, that's 10 years old. But most people fucking have it. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, mm-hmm. Meanwhile, PlayStation 3 is giving away Bioshock Infinite. It's giving away, you know, Uncharted 3. Better games. Ba- yeah, better games that are still relevant. You know what? They're doing it better. And they're giving away like five games instead of two a month. Better still, yeah. yeah. I mean, that they, they have it because that's what you're, <clears throat> you're giving away fucking free shit. Like, now, here's my life right now. I have an Xbox 360. Yep. If it breaks for whatever reason, I'm definitely 100% not going to get an Xbox oh, One. Oh, no, you're done. I'm all done. Yeah. Now, if instead I had a million Xbox Live points, then I probably wouldn't get an you're, Xbox One. You're committed. Yeah, because, well, I mean, I don't want to lose the value. You know what I mean? I don't want to lose my investment. Yeah. But regardless, I think uh, you trust the company now, at least. You know, even if they give you a million. But you, you're, you're saying, well, at least Xbox in the future won't fuck me over if something goes wrong. What, why would I think that? Because if they fix the problem for you. If, if, if you had your issue with this, with Xbox, right? You lost your data. Yeah. And they were like, you know what? We fucked up. Here's a bunch of shit. Or here's yeah. A, maybe not a million points, but here's a bunch of shit. Here's our... Well, Fixing the problem. Fix a relationship, yeah. Then, then you trust them down the road. But now it's like any any error, you're done. Yeah, you know? I mean, that's, yeah. And, and if I, if I knew they'll take care of me if I bitch. You're probably leaning towards the PS4 right now, are you? I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I will definitely switch because of what you just told me now and yeah. the fact that I just, I'm a very principled person, okay? I will do things that hurt me just to hurt companies that get pissed at, you know? That doesn't sound like you. It, it's very much. <laughs> like, who, I would keep, I like Hulu because yeah. I like watching the shows I like, but I'm, I'm not willing to give them any more money. Would you not eat for an entire week if it put Hulu out of business? Hunger Strike? Oh, what? Fuck, nothing. Ab- an entire week. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, I would blog about that, definitely. Yeah, shut down Hulu for, uh, yeah. love it. How's Soil Train you, by the way? You been using that? I haven't had any of it. <laughs> Well, you since, give it to me? Well, since you guys had it on the podcast, I haven't had a single serving of it. I haven't had it yet. You, no, yeah, you guys I mean, had it on the podcast. Yeah, since uh, we and you had it on the podcast yeah. one time. <laughs> I haven't well, had any. It's just sitting around uh, Well, you gave me that, that one serving, but I'd like some more if you're not using it. Anyway. anyway. We should send it as one of our prizes to one of How do you send just a fucking Ziploc bag? It, that doesn't look it, 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 no, that's how it comes. It comes in a pretty nice package. It's a nice looking package. Even individual servings? It's in you. three servings. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's that's a great gift. That's a sick so gift. some uh, one of our lucky listeners yeah, maybe might get a little. Uh, you little... gotta <laughs> you gotta show us something more than just a five star review. Six star. You gotta get well six star. You gotta six star. You gotta you gotta show us that you've like brought in listeners on some I don't know whatever. But... Okay, so look, let's go to let's tip. go to our, let's go to our <clears throat> just the tip. Of okay, the week. yeah. So tip of the week. Just the tip. Just the tip. Yeah. I got a great little little tip. Call it dare I call it a life hack. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Set an alarm in your phone, okay? And the alarm goes off at when you say you got a fork at five. Mm-hmm. The alarm goes off at four fifty, and the alarm is like something that it, it buzzes your phone and it tells you what are you forgetting. So when you leave work, you don't forget anything at your desk. How many times do you forget something at your desk? 
it's it's always food in the fridge. And it happens. And yeah, I would if I had an alarm that came off or that went off like right before I left. Yeah, that would be good. I yeah, love I love that tip. So set up set up set up an alarm uh-huh. that you know right before you leave work uh-huh. to not forget a day at work. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's smart, smart, smart mm-hmm. tip. I I have a tip I guess I didn't think was a tip until Malone pointed out that it actually worked out pretty well. Yeah, is we went out to eat dinner before we got to the, to the cast today, and I knew right away what I wanted because I looked up the menu online before we got there. Mm. So. You know, if you don't do that, if you're like, oh, we're going out to eat here tonight, and then you guys go there, and everybody fucking sits around jerking off for 20 minutes, trying to sell what they want to eat, they're chatting, they're Instagramming on their phones, doing whatever. Well, fucking, before you guys all go, especially if you have a, a significant other who does this, you know, sits around and does nothing while everybody's trying to figure out what they want to eat, then say, hey, baby, dude, bro, guys. Anybody. Google the, the website's menu, the place you're going to eat, and see, just try to decide what you want to eat before you go. And it'll save you guys a lot of time. It'll be a... Uh, Take a, little, take a little stress off your shoulders. It's a good tip. I mean, since I've become vegetarian, I need to look ahead yeah. to know what I'm getting. So I started doing that, but that's a good tip all the time. So that's a good tip. I'd like to do that because I sometimes feel the crunch when I'm sitting there. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, I feel the crunch like I need to order. You try to have a conversation. Yeah. You felt the crunch today. It's tough. So that's got, just the tip. I have a tip myself too. This oh, is yeah, one yeah. that I've been doing for a while, but I never knew it. Um, if you live in a winter kind of state, like some place that has winter weather where it's cold, Tuck your shirt in. Tuck your undershirt in. Uh, it really keeps you warm. I never knew this up until about two years ago. And people tell me I'm really stupid because I've lived in Minnesota my entire life and I never knew this one. But I never did. And my friend, uh, my friend Sarah, told me this tip and I did it. And it keeps well, me so much warmer. You're a genius for mostly coming up with that yourself. I did not come up with myself. Oh, your friend Sarah. Not at all. My friend Sarah told me about this tip and I do it and it keeps me really warm. And I want anyone else who uh, lives in a cold place do this because it really does keep you warm. I don't know why you're laughing at me. Like it's, it's <laughs> a serious this tip. is a tip. <clears throat> this is the tip. Uh, you well, say it's all the time. I know. Well, your one is tuck it, tuck it into your. What are you under- saying? I'm just saying tuck your undershirt in. Just in tuck general. in your shirt. Tuck in your undershirt. Yeah. Well, like with your coat on, you tuck in your undershirt. Well, Wait. If, if you wear two, if you wear a sweatshirt and a t-shirt, tuck your t-shirt in in the winter. Oh, so it's not. It's not to keep your pants. Kind of it's even if you wear. Oh, yeah, it's even oh, if you wear a sweatshirt. Like oh, I thought. I thought you were. I thought he was punking you. Yeah, I'm laughing because no, I'm, I'm not you know. punking you. Your tip is good too. Your tip actually keeps you warmer. But I just mean, if anyone ever is cold, yeah. try tucking your undershirt in because it really helps a lot, and uh, oh, okay. it really right. made me a lot warmer in my life. All right, all right. That's so I appreciate it. I thought you were just punking. Yeah, my my tip. My tip is your tip is even better. Tuck your undershirt into your underwear. Yeah. And then take your regular <laughs> shirt into your pants. Yeah, I see how you do for that. Dress yeah. For dressing. Yeah, because they always bunch up. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, all right. Well, good tips. All right, so, let's go to picks. Let's go to picks. Hold on, you're gonna go first. So picks. <laughs> picks. Right, I have two picks. My first one. Um, if you ever read the web comic XKCD, he makes these kind of pretty funny, kind of nerdyish web, uh, like little web comics. He has a blog and he uh, pointed me out to this Chrome extension. The browser Google Chrome lets you install extensions that can do all sorts of interesting things. This Safari, one, Safari does extensions now too. Really? Yeah. yeah. They, they, this one is for Chrome. I don't know if it's available for other browsers. Yeah. It's called Dictionary of Numbers. And what it does is any website you're looking at, if it has a number, like it says, you know, $30 million, it will put in brackets like $30 million estimated like you know, the average CEO pay in like, you know, 2014, it like relates numbers to one another. So you can kind of see like a, you can kind of peg numbers to like what a reasonable equivalent number is. It's, it's pretty interesting. Like it says, it just kind of picks random so, numbers in your website and not every, only random numbers, not every number, not all of them. It does. It seems to do maybe one out of one out of three or one out of four numbers. So just every number you see, it'll like, well, that- Every page you see, some of the numbers will have a special like annotation. Yes, that makes it a little more interesting. Yes, like I saw one that said eight hundred thousand dollars. It said price of flowers at whatever the royal wedding in Britain. So now I remember that, and I it helps me kind of understand. I mean, for one, it's amusing most of the time. It's just amusing, uh, but it does it for all. It's not just money. It does it for weights and like distances and things like that. It's pretty. It's so it it's, makes it's amusing. Your internet experience a little better. A little bit more amusing, and it kind of helps for the numbers. My other pick is uh, Star Trek, the original series. Uh, I've been watching this often with my girlfriend, Yolanda. Like, uh, we, it's, I've, I've been a fan of The Next Generation for quite a while. Original series is definitely different. There's kind of more monsters, but it has, it's, uh, it's good. It's worth watching. I can never get into it. How come? It just looks too, 
too shitty, I guess. And I mean, I love I love sci-fi, but I just cannot get in there. Yeah, the look, you gotta follow. The the acting's good, the stories are good. It has all, many of the good things of Next Generation. It's it's all, I gotta, I if, just, you, so if I, you can get over the costumes let me, and the, let me, the let me special effects. Hop in here. I'm not really a Star Trek guy. Now I've watched, I watched, I've seen the Next Generation a decent amount of times. Me and you, when we were kids, used to go to see the Next Generation movies in theaters, right? Let's say I'm on- um, Is that true? Uh, we, we saw first contact. Yeah, we saw like two of them, two or three. Do we see? I don't remember anymore. Well, shut the one. fuck up. Well, we, we might have. You might be right. Whatever. Not the point. <laughs> let's say. I'm, let's say I'm. I am sort of a newbie, but let's say I, I'm a serious newbie. What would you guys both recommend as a point of entry to Star Trek fans? Next generation. Sorry, next, next generation. Yeah. Then, Best yeah. show ever. And what? Like you start season one just from the beginning? Oh, well, you gotta no. start. You gotta start. Yeah, you gotta start season one. Say no. Start season three. What? There's some shows like that where it was too. Uh, what? It's, like it's, you hate it, Tashi Yar that much? It's worse. The beginning's worse, I think. Uh, so well, it is. It is. I mean, I can't imagine you start not out season one. I have you guys seen understand. the new movies? I hate them. I can't stand. You them. hate both. Have, of them. have I not. Seen I can't either. stand the new movies. You haven't yeah. seen either. I hate them both. I like them. I hate them. They're actually they're they're high pack action thrillers. I hate yeah. I hate action does not belong in Star Trek. I, I like hate that. action, says Adam. I do. I hate action in movies pretty much. My boy. My boy. Benedict Cumber, Cumberbatch. 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 He's in that. Yeah, he's, he's, in, he's in one yeah. of those. Yep. He's um, an action star, just like the rest of the movies. I mean, I, I do love Sherlock. It's one of my favorite series of all time. So, but yeah, so that's interesting. So you say Next Generation. You say start season three. You say start season one. <clears throat> yeah, I would start the beginning. I mean, no. well, maybe you're right. I mean, you can watch. You can start season three where it's like. Would you watch one of the movies first? Maybe is like a no, 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 never. No. Mm. I just think that it's less. It's less corny. In season three and beyond, you're like, right. They, they some, really some corniness. They got to do corny, they, they got to stride. Yeah. And then, but what you could do is watch the rest and then start over and watch the first. Yeah, because after you're you, after you're fine with it, and then the corniness won't really okay. bother you so, so much. What, so but, season three, episode one, we're talking. Yeah, I think that's right. reasonable. That's, that's good. good. That's good. I think. Yeah, yeah. that would good be good. Advice. Thanks, guys. But original series, good. Yeah. I'll yeah. Have to try again. Well, Kirk, Kirk, you know Captain Kirk. Got a nice He's a pretty classic guy. William William Shatner. He's a handsome devil. Yeah. Yeah. And the Litter Nimoy. I mean, I know the actor is better than I know the show. Mm -hmm. You know? Who, who plays Zulu? What's his name? George Takai. Yeah, Takai is big, big, yeah, big on social media. Yeah, he's very awesome. big. So, yeah. yeah I'd be I mean, I'll go next. I'll go next. I got yeah, some picks. Why don't you? Uh, well, I got a couple. I got three picks. I watched a movie yesterday called Better Life Through Chemistry, which is a movie that came out of nowhere. Emily found it on Netflix. It's got Sam Rockwell from uh, Moon I like and him. other movies as well. And it's a great movie. He plays a pharmacist, and then he. Uh, Olivia Wilde also in there. Who is some people's Ooh, celebrity uh, freebie. I like her. Mm. She's a good one. By the way, I, I realized the other day, it's a little weird thing. I I saw this article, it was like, best looking of Jewish women. In uh huh. Hollywood. Cool. Sarah Silverman. There was like 20 on there, whatever. I clicked on it. And my top five, four of my top five old like old celebrity lists are all on there. You like Jews? Apparently, I love Jewish women. Who are your, who are, what for? Isla Fisher was on there. Who? Isla Fisher. She's the redhead in, uh, Isla Fisher, maybe? She's the redhead in Wedding Crashers. Does that ring any bells? Yeah, redhead, redhead, not into it. You recognize her. <laughs> she's done a lot of shit. Keep going. Anyway, uh, Lizzie Kaplan. Yep. Love Lizzie Kaplan. She was the chicken mean Kaplan. Girls. Yeah. It's Jewish name. I used to love Zoe Chanel, but not anymore. She's Jewish? Yep. She was on the list. Mm. She's so quirky. She's, she's the quirkiest. <laughs> But this is this is like this is an old list, you know what I mean? So keep like, going. Natalie Portman was on there, who I used to love. Okay. Um, there were a couple others, but like, hey, yeah, I like this. The, the, the late the Jewish movies. Yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, he, so the movie is uh, Life Through Chemistry, whatever. Check it out. <laughs> it's uh, it's a good movie. It's an indie film. It, I found it very entertaining. Yeah. It's good. There's a, I've been playing, you know, as you probably know, if you follow me, I've been playing Nintendo games in alphabetical order. And I found a lot of, you know, hidden gems that nobody's ever heard of, that I have never heard of. And there's a game called Air Fortress on Nintendo, which I've been playing a lot. It's actually really great. Like, I've legitimately been playing it, trying to beat it. Excellent game. Nobody's ever heard of it. I looked it up on Wikipedia. You, you were there when we played it together. We played it. Which one is that? It's one of the A games. I'll show it to you. But you, you were there when we played oh. it. You were in my video there. But anyway, uh, it's a great game. I, I looked it up on Wikipedia. Only 3,000 copies were made and sold in the, in the States. Wow. So it's very low run, and yeah. nobody's ever heard of it or had it. Mm -hmm. But you can definitely emulate it, and I think you should. It's a great Nintendo game. How do they get these from the cartridge into an emulator? 
Like I, they like one. fucking plug them in and download them and something. Like, no idea. It seems yeah, they're, like they're perfect. Like they get them. They must bad. completely they, download. They, them they completely. download the the ROM. Yeah, they download the file from the circuit. Yeah, they must. Somebody Some must have built something that like challenges it. That's pretty impressive. Right. Yeah, it's amazing. It's weird. Because it's not just building software to run the the. I mean, they can't. System. They couldn't initially. They must have used the cartridge. Yeah, like they, yeah, they have plugged the cartridge into something, it and then ripped the Nintendo it's apart and taken the. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, so. so, and my third pick is uh, a pretty cool dude. I, I've uh, named Eric. Eric Hart. He's a. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's not a new dude, but you know, I've known him for a long time. <laughs> but we just kind of reconnected, and we've been you know spending a little more time together. And he's not, a really not a new dude though. I mean, he's not new. Like, I've known him for a long time since probably you know since high school or yeah. college days. My college, my high school days. College days. He's from high school. Yeah, but I never went with him. Yeah. We hung out at the movie theater together. Anyway, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's an, you know, a, a blast from the past, but yeah. we've kind of reconnected recently and it's been really great. Well, I'm happy for you. Thanks. Yeah. Is that a first? That's a first for the picks, having a real person. No, yeah. actually, last week I had Darius Kazemi <laughs> as a pick. So. Yeah, he's not, he's not, not, but nobody you've known in real life. No, he was a celebrity kind of guy. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you're your best picks? Yeah, yeah. Um, I spent a lot of this last week reading, reading a book. With words and everything. Reading, like legit reading, sitting yeah. in a chair, reading on yeah. paper. On my kid, on my Kindle. Like what you try to make people think you do because you have all the books in your shelf. Don't hey. be a motherfucker. <laughs> I read on my Kindle. But you might have remembered me talking uh, like one of the early casts about the the Mistborn trilogy, which is a fantasy novel, serious fantasy novel written by Brandon Sanderson. I do remember that. Yeah. So I, I've been hearing a lot about like everybody's like, oh, if you like Brandon Sanderson, if you like fantasy novels, you should read this book, this series called. The, the series is called The Stormlight Archives. The first book is called The Way of Kings. So I was like, fuck it, I'll read it. It's like 1,200 pages, so it's a fucking dense motherfucker. Mm. But I, got, I started reading it, and I immediately just like got hooked. It's, it's a great fucking book. And if you like any kind of like fantasy novels, if you, if you love... Um, here's what's really cool about this guy. Is he, he's, he creates rules in his, in his worlds he creates, and these rules he adheres to. Like, there's no like weird, made-up fantasy shit that comes in and saves the day. He doesn't believe in... Do what is it? Deus Ex Machina? Mm -hmm. He doesn't believe in that. So he creates these magic systems. And the magic systems are like the, the law to him. And if, if the magic system doesn't work within what's happening, then he, you can't save the day. Do you know what I mean? So like, but the characters are really interesting, which is probably what attracts him the most. It's not just the world, but the characters are great. Like There are chapters where you read about nothing but the, the one, like a character's past life. And I'm hooked. I want to know more about his past life. I want to know what they've done. I want to know what traumatizes them, what what makes them tick. But what's really cool, so I'm reading this book, and I'm noticing kind of callbacks, very weird, vague, like, references almost. And it kind of reminds me of the Mistborn trilogy. So I Google this writer, and I started learning more about him. And apparently he's, he's like, th this book just started. It's the first series, first book in the series. The second book just came out, and there's really ten books, so it's pretty new. Ten, yeah, in the series. But he's he's got a bunch of different like series in the works, and he's kind of writing them all a little bit at a time. Jesus, I know he's, he's prolific. He writes like a book a year at least. He's intense. Okay. But all these books, not all of them, but a lot of the series are going to be connected through this thing called the Cosmere, which is like he's created a universe basically, where there was originally one like entity or planet. And this planet, or this entity, like split up into 16 different pieces. And these pieces landed on different planets and created these like magic systems that he's using in his book. So each of these books actually references this bigger arc that he's eventually going to wrap all his like different trilogies into. So it's like really intense, very interesting. But like he's very much, hey, what's up, buddy? He's very much about like rewarding the reader by being like not insulting their intelligence, you know? So he's, he's all, it's all about, like, you're figuring out the mystery as the book is going along. Nothing's explained to you. Like, you've got to kind of figure out as you go. It's really good. I, re I highly recommend it. I recommend the Mistborn trilogy. If you want to start this series, Stormlight, Chron Stormlight Archives, the first book's Way of the King. Or, what are they called? Way of Kings. The Way of Kings. Highly recommend it. Great. So I'm on the second book right now. I'm reading through it. Love it. My next pick is, uh, I watched Escape Plan today, actually. Stallone and Schwarzenegger. Stallone and Schwarzenegger. Not an amazing movie. New? Like last year. It's newish. 2013. Not an amazing movie, but fun. A, definitely a, a good movie. It's got that fun kind of banter. It feels like a little bit like Expendables Light. Mm -hmm. You know, the best way to describe it. Um, yeah, yeah. Stallone's got these great moments where he kind of shows off his, his prison knowledge and how smart he is. Uh, it's good. It's worth a watch. So whatever. I also watched A Walk Among the Tombstones, but not a pick. Not that amazing. So 
Doesn't mind. That's my shit of the week. All right, okay. That's a uh, pretty good picks. A lot of picks. Three dudes. A lot of picks. Okay. Yes. Yeah, a lot of picks. Yeah. Guys, so you guys have a full plate for the week yeah. because I know that you fully follow up on all of our picks. Take them real serious. Well, some definitely. people get love our equalizer picks. We'll teach you back on the YouTube comments. I mean, that's a great movie. It's a great movie. You watch the equalizer here, Juan? No. You gotta watch it. He doesn't like action. I don't like action. No? No. Not into it. I like the boring, got? boring stuff. He likes boring flicks. Like what? Boring, uh, like what? Like, like the what movie? movie? Like the movie Boyhood? The movie, I like the sound of it. It's gonna be an Oscar, <laughs> it's, gonna be an, it's gonna be an Oscar contender. It's boring? Yeah. Ooh. That's the, that's what I, I, I haven't seen it. I've heard, I, I've heard I, should, I should check this out. But it's, I think it's a real, I, I'm gonna watch it soon, but it's a real <laughs> life, like, a director actually picked a kid and used him as an actor in his movie, but he filmed the movie over like four, like 14 years or something like that. That sounds oh, awesome. Oh, that movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah, like, yeah. he's at, the, the kid is actually growing up. It's not different actors playing mm -hmm. the kid throughout the movie. It's, a four, it's like a 15 year plan wow. movie. Yeah. Yeah, this guy is cool. real, really, I heard uh, really Gil I heard, long scheme in this really good. <clears throat> So, I'm gonna watch that soon, probably. Alright, well we gotta wrap this, uh, Let's wrap it up. we gotta wrap up this baby. Yeah. Let's wrap this shit up. Thanks well, for watching, everybody. Let us know if you like the three-man team. I Obviously, yeah, talk, give us some feedback on, the. we uh, we have a new venue, I don't know if you saw this, we're in a new spot. <laughs> you know, we got a new, uh, the audio might be a little weird. We have, you know. The video might suck, I'm, the lighting might be terrible. It might be all bad. Uh, let us know what you think. We'll try to fix it if it's bad. I'm begging Malone to do more three-ways. Hey, if you want Malone in here, then let us know. If you want Yuri out, let us know. <laughs> Whatever you gotta do. No, no joke. Like, if you want Krasny out, let us know. I, if you can't have me out, that's not one of those. <laughs> we'll see. <you> later. <laughs> so hit us up at, at, with feedback at abdpodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter. You wanna give your Twitter handle? You at Freddie Z, F R E D D Y Z. Two D's. Freddie Z with two D's. Two D's. Yuri, trial by Yuri. Yuri with a Y. Yuri I'm with a Y. tweeting a lot more this week. Hey, he, he's picking up his tweet I'm working game. hard. So, you guys, if you want some good tweets, you want some hard hitting tweets, follow him. If you want the same tweet talking about Hulu, follow Krasny. I'm all done with Hulu, but if you want to see the at same Lex tweets Krasny. multiple times, then follow me, <laughs> Lex Krasny. And, uh, so we have a good time together, I think. Us guys. And give us those five star <laughs> reviews. We'll send you a fucking gift. You just gotta. Look, you want a gift or not? It's quite simple. Proof, take a screen cap of you typing the review and then post a review and send it to us. Give us your address. And we'll Look, send you a gift. We're pretty much collecting five star reviews at this point. So yeah. get, get it out there. From Don't be the last it. kid on the block to give us a five star review. Go to iTunes. Give that a little five star. <laughs> That's enough jerking yeah. off. All right. Let's uh, get refill our glasses and maybe go on this. Take a little, yeah. you know, a little take, sauna. Take a little sauna. <clears throat> Cheers, guys. This is going to be like an hour and a half long. Yeah, yeah. We've done, done an hour and We've, uh, this is fine. No one, like I said, no one's ever complained about life. You're good, yeah. you want more. No one's ever like, oh, it's just such a long podcast.